you search for PHP on Upwork, you'll found, find around 12,000 jobs. Comparatively, Node has about 4,500 and Python has about 10,000. The John Morris Show, episode 434. Don't forget to grab your copy of my book, Upwork Essentials, which will teach you how to start getting clients on Upwork in three days or less. It normally sells for $32 over on Amazon, but you can get a free digital copy when you go to myjohn.us slash essentials. Again, that's myjohn.us slash essentials. I want to talk today about PHP. Is it, is it a language that's still worth learning in 2021? Because I, I used to do these videos, but it's been several years uh, since I've done one, and I think it would be sort of remiss if I didn't acknowledge that things have changed quite a bit since then. So I want to dive into the question. If, if you're looking for a hot take, that's not what you're going to get out of this. But if you want an actual, you know, if you're legitimately trying to figure out if if PHP is something that you should learn as a part of your career and figure out what languages you should learn uh, as a part of your career, uh, then that's what I'm going to try and tackle in this video. The one big caveat that I should put out here with this is, um, you know, I don't do a ton of coding anymore. You know, I, I kind of live in a bubble. I've done freelance work for, for most of my career. Never really have been in the startup or enterprise space. So my context, my, my vision on all of that is pretty limited. So you're getting my take on it from that perspective. I more manage coders anymore. I don't write a ton of code uh, uh, much anymore. So take it all with a grain of salt and, and ultimately make your own decisions. But I have been doing it for 17 years. So I think I do have a little bit of perspective that I can share with you on this. So is PHP worth learning in 2021? And as I said, I think it'd be, you know, <laughs> I think it'd be wrong to just say that things haven't changed since, you know, three, four years ago, the last time I did one of these. I think three or four years ago, it was a lot of people wanting PHP to die because they liked other languages better. They thought they were more technically sound, etc. Whereas today, I think it's fairly obvious that PHP is not near as popular as it used to be particular again in the enterprise startup space that's sort of been dwindling for a while now uh, and so what it really comes down to i think the way that you truly determine this is if it's worth learning for you is you first have to determine your career path because while php has been dwindling or is pretty much non-existent in a lot of startups uh, and, and enterprise space and so forth and a lot of the traditional jobs that you're going to go out there uh, and look for as a web developer, it still has a strong presence in the WordPress space. It still has a strong presence uh, in the freelance space. Just a quick search before I uh, jumped on this video over on Upwork. You know, if you search for PHP on Upwork, you'll found, find around 12,000 jobs. Comparatively, Node has about 4,500 and Python has about 10,000. So, and again, that's, that's Upwork. That's the freelance space. That's a very specific niche. So within that niche, it's still very popular, more popular than those other two languages that have kind of taken over a little bit. So again, it depends on what your, your career path is. So the way I look at it is you shouldn't be choosing your languages first and then determining your career path. You should be determining your career path and what you want your career and your life, your day-to-day -day life to look like, and then you choose your languages based on that. So do you want to go the regular job, the startup, the enterprise route, or do you want to go more of the freelance owning your own business type route. You can certainly always switch and all of those things, but I think it's important to think about that first before you determine what languages you're going to learn. And then once you know that, then that's going to change the languages uh, that are right for you, or at least the ones you should learn first. Because if you're going enterprise uh, and, and startup, Node, Python, you know, maybe Java, well, I've never actually been in that space, so I don't know exactly what all the languages that are popular in that space are. I can't really speak to that, but it's going to be different. Whereas if you go freelance, you know, especially if you're going to be doing anything related to WordPress, which by the way, if you're going freelance, you're almost always going to have to deal with WordPress at some point, which means you're going to have to deal with PHP. So uh, even honestly, you're probably going to have to deal with jQuery as archaic as that sounds. 
like it's still a thing in the WordPress space because there's still architect architecture and, and things that are built using jQuery in the WordPress space. So, you know, again, it just depends what route you're going. And I think the way to think about what career path you want to choose, at least the way that I've done it, is just sit down and think about what you want your day-to-day -day life to actually be and what things you value most. For example, my day-to-day -day life, what I value most, I value, I value time, not money. I value freedom, not security. Okay, that's me. That's what I value. But if you value security, job security, you know, more than you value necessarily freedom, if you value money more than you necessarily value time, then going the enterprise startup route might be a better route for you because you're generally going to get those things more in that space. Whereas the freelance route, you know, I, I can work whatever hours I want to work in, in a particular day. Now that's going to cost me money if I, if I don't work a ton of hours, but I have a lot more flexibility and freedom to do what I want on a day-to-day -day basis. The flip side of that is, you know, every time I end a, a contract with a client or, you know, each month I'm always looking at, okay, where's the next client coming from? Where's the next income coming from, etc. I've been doing it long enough that I'm comfortable with that. But, you know, that, that can be scary for a lot of people. So, again, you just have to sit down and think about what do you want your day-to-day -day life to look like? Do you want to get up and go to a job every day, have that job security, make make the money that you, you, you want to make, etc.? Or do you want to have a little more freedom? Do you want to be able to work from home, etc.? Uh, and determine what, what's most important to you. And that's going to help you decide what career path you should take. And then down the line, that's going to that's going to determine what languages you should take. So, again, it's 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 really the languages come towards the end. They're not the first thing that you uh, should be looking at when you're looking at it from a career efficiency perspective. Now, if you're looking at it from the perspective of like, what do I just want to learn? I enjoy learning this by all means, pursue your interest, etc., but from a career efficiency path, languages are almost towards the end of that. So is PHP worth learning in 2021? In certain niches, in certain contexts, absolutely. Not only is it worth learning, you're going to have to learn it because you're going to have to deal with it uh, at some point. So that's my take on this whole question as of 2021. Obviously, it's evolved since the last time uh, I did this. But if again, if you're generally looking for an answer and trying to figure out what languages you should learn as a web developer, hopefully that gives you uh, some information and, and a path forward. Don't forget to grab your copy of my book, Upwork Essentials, which will teach you how to start getting clients on Upwork in three days or less. It normally sells for $32 over on Amazon, but you can get a free digital copy when you go to myjohn.us slash essentials. Again, that's myjohn.us slash essentials.